Welcome, many friends, to our second craft along of 2024. In the first one, we built this magic shop, which was a kit off of Amazon. And now we're going to build a, an upper structure, which is going to be a magic bookshop. And it will rest on top of this kit that we've already completed. There'll be a back side and a front side, and it will open on the top in the magic shop just as it opens um, for or in the bookshop as it opens for the magic shop. So I hope you enjoy this video and there will be written instructions on the blog. We're going to start with the main construction and this is chipboard. It's a Cricut chipboard that I've used. Again, all the, the materials are listed on the blog post. You've got a back, a top, a bottom, and two sides. We're going to start by gluing the bottom to the back. And I use these one, two, three blocks. You can get them on Amazon. They're great for holding things in position until the glue takes hold and for getting a straight, or uh, uh, getting things in line and to stand up properly. So to glue the bottom on, you're going to put glue on the outside edge and attach it to the back piece. This is easiest done by laying the bottom flat on your table and then scooting the back up to it. You want to make sure that it's flush on the left and right sides and it's firmly pushed up against the bottom piece. This is where your one, two, three blocks come in handy. I think I have four of them and I keep them on hand. I use them constantly. You just want to make sure that you get it's firmly attached and pushed up against that bottom piece and that it, the back is straight. Now we're going to attach the sides by putting glue on the inside of the bottom and back side and they will fit flush up next to the other structure as you saw me do. And both the left and the right sides are attached in the same manner. You want to make sure that it's flush on the back and there will be some glue that leaks out so I suggest that you run your finger along the back side and kind of smooth that glue out so it's a nice clean edge. And to get the glue on the inside to make it a little neater you can twist up a piece of the paper towel to a little point and then just kind of run it along the inside edge there and it'll clean it up. Now you want to attach the right side in the same manner. The top part just slides in and attaches to the back and the sides, but we won't do that until much later. So you can set that piece aside. Now you want to move this out of the way and let it dry so the glue gets adhered pretty good. And this front section, it's the same. You've got the front, you've got a top and a bottom, and a left and a right side, and it's put together in the same manner that we put the back section. And on this bottom piece, I had a little bit of a piece a paper that didn't cut all the way off so I'm going to trim that up so I've got a nice clean edge to attach to the front. You always want to make sure you've got a flat straight edge when you go to glue something like this or else it won't adhere properly and the front piece won't stand up properly. <clears throat> Excuse me. The chipboard I'm using is a Cricut chipboard. Um, 
I find it works very well for these kinds of structures. It holds up well. And I believe this is the 1.5 millimeter. Let me double check here. Um, I do have a PDF included with the download. Yes, it's the 1.5 millimeter. And in the blog post, there's a lot of other information in the PDF file. This is going to be a free project. I'm not going to sell it. It won't be in my shop. You'll, the download will be um, either with the post or in my shop as a free download. My online shop, not my Etsy shop. So now I'm attaching the right side. And at some point, and I'm not sure how quick it will get done, but I will be offering a, um, an SVG file for this project, but it will be um, a, pro a standalone project, and I will have a bottom part of a shop and a top part. So it will be a little different than this, but that one I will charge for. So now, once we have our pieces all glued, we want to paint the inside. For the paints that I'm using, this is a linen color, which I'm going to use for the inside. The green, I'm going to use on the windows. And the white, I'm using for distressing. And it's all acrylic paint. You want to paint on your ceilings, you want to paint just the one side. And then you want to paint the inside of your front and back structure. And you want to put a good two coats on there because you want it to be pretty um, smooth and solid. You can see I've already painted my two coats on the ceiling. And on the back piece, you can see I, you don't have to paint the whole entire back piece because we'll have bookshelves that will be covering up um, the, some of those side areas, and you don't need to paint the bottom. And here, after I've painted it, I'm using Ranger Distressing Ink, and I believe that's a vintage photo, and I'm going to distress it. And you can distress this as much or as little as you like, just keep adding it a little bit at a time until you get it to where you like it. It's your project. You can do it as much or as little as you like. Just make it your own. There's no right or wrong way to it. Just enjoy the process. I've also uh, distressed or inked the ceilings. So now we're going to work on the flooring. Now this is craft board, Cricut craft board that I'm working on. Um, it's it's a very nice material. It's thin. It's easy to work with. You can do your flooring in two different ways. I'm working on the front section flooring now. You can either cut one big strip like I've just done, and I'm going to going to lay it down here and mark off the width or length. I'm sorry. <clears throat> And then you can um, either use that one big strip or you can take that strip and cut it down into quarter inch, a little bit less than quarter inch strips. And then take those quarter inch strips and cut them down into smaller pieces so that you have individual boards you can glue in one by one. And you just glue them in, you cut them in different lengths and glue them in staggered. I, you probably have all seen flooring done like this before. For the solid strip, I've used a scoreboard and just scored my boards into that strip so that it's one solid piece, but you still have the look of individual boards. And I do this a lot of times because it's quicker and it really does give you the same look. There you can see where I've scored it. 
and now I'm going to paint it and I'm using markers at three different shades of a brown or gray black kind of brownish color and I'm just randomly coloring in the boards with the markers. And I try to stay on top and don't and I don't color down in the crevices too much. Those will show up later when you add your um, distressing in the white. I love using markers like this. You do need to seal this when you're done, but we're going to seal the whole project in the end anyway, so you don't have to stop and do it right now unless you just particularly want to. That sealing it's just to protect it from the elements, dust, and whatnot so that when you want to dust it or clean it up you can. Now we're going to do the distressing with the white. You need a paper towel and I'm using a small stencil brush. I find stencil brushes really easy to work with when I'm doing this, um, adding the white distressing or um, dry brushing over the top. And for dry brushing you'll want to dip your brush in the paint wipe it down and get almost all of the paint off and then just with a light touch wipe it across the surface and again it's your project you can do as much as you want or as little as you want or not add any um, dry brushing to it at all and there's what my finished floor looks like and now i'm simply going to glue the whole piece in place when you do this because you this is an open structure that's going to open you will be able to see these edges so you want to finish all of your edges um, and then you can wait until the end to do this or you can do it now whichever you like but here I'm taking the marker and finishing off this bottom edge of the flooring you just don't want to see raw edges anywhere And here I'm going to repeat the process for the back section flooring. The same as I did the, the front piece. I'll score it on a scoreboard once I get the right dimensions. I'll use the markers again to paint it and use the dry brushing on it and then I'm gonna, going to just glue it in. There's my finished flooring. Here you see me attaching the back section to the bottom, the magic shop. You can do this at any point. Um, there is a, a piece that we need to make for the uh, bottom or the top of the magic shop to cover up the wiring. And I believe this was done in the previous craft along video. I showed you how to do that, but you'll see this process again for the roof of the bookstore near the end or closer to the end of the video. So if I were you, I would wait and not attach this at this point. But when you do go to attach it, you will need to add some clips and some weights to hold it down and make sure it gets a firm, um, that it's glued real well. Again, I would wait and do this at a later date. I just kind of jumped ahead here. Now we're going to work on the windows and the doors. So in the kit, it will cut. The SVG file has eight windows. And you'll cut all eight, and then you'll glue two together so that you will have four windows in the end. You'll have two windows that go on the inside and two windows that go on the outside. You can see here I've painted the windows green and dry brushed them with the white. You also have clear acrylic and there's a, a file for that in the kit as well. And this acrylic that I use comes with a uh, protective coating on both sides. I really like working with this acrylic because there's times when you want to put your acrylic in but you still have to paint or add texture and you don't want to get it on the windows so here i'm gluing the windows to the inside 
you're only going to glue the inside windows at this point we'll use we'll do the outside of the windows later on so I'm gluing both of them in and I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes and here is the door the door has two pieces glued together with the acrylic on the back I've left the protective coating on both sides of this because later on you won't see it in the video but I wanted kind of a frosted um, non see-through since we don't have a hole cut for the door so I wanted you to not be able to just see that back wall later on I do add some paint to the um, frosted glass area to darken it up a bit because I wanted it to look dirty and dingy so and you want to glue your door in just a lot little bit to the left of the middle side here I'm going to go ahead and do add my acrylic in so you'll want to take one side and um, remove the protective coating from only one side of the window And then you're going to glue your window in and you want to glue it in so that the side that is still covered with that protective covering is facing up the side where you where you removed the protective covering will go down later on we're going to add texture or paint or something on the outside whatever you choose to do and so you want that protective covering still on the uh, acrylic at that point so that if you happen to hit the window with whatever you're doing the outside it doesn't mess up your window and you can take those off at the very end you can glue your outside windows on top of that protective covering and then just use a craft knife to go around the edges to slit that protective coating and it'll peel right out <clears throat> pardon me I need to get a drink of water. Sorry about the crinkling. When you're building this I would suggest that you print out the PDF file or have it on your computer and um, use that and follow along with the video again there's there's more information in the PDF posts and instructions than I'm going to give you here otherwise this video would be like two hours long Here you see me using my one, two, three blocks. I can't stress how often I use these. They just help things glue flat. And the written instructions are in two parts. So this is where you need to switch to your second or part two of the written instructions or the post, the second post online. This is grit paste. It again is in my um, supply list and I have used some acrylic paint and a fawn color to color the texture paste. I have about five bottles of this stuff and it's in all different colors. And I got a little bit ahead of myself here. You'll see in a minute. But um, I decided to use texture paste or the grit paste on the outside exterior of the structure. So you just kind of put this stuff on like you're baking a cake. I then, once I got started, decided that I wanted to put some little bricks on the outside as well. So I just kind of had to stop at one point here and um, here you can see me kind of texturing up the grip paste so that it's not completely smooth or flat. You do what you want. You may want it smooth you may want it really rough. It, it's just, again, it's your project. Do how you like it. You do want to make sure you get all the way to all of the edges, though. And here you can see where I'm going to glue in the little bricks. The little bricks are made from craft board. They're just, I cut them out of a scrap piece in random sizes. I think they're all the same height, but the widths are different.
I had shaky hands this morning. Or that day, rather. There you see I've painted my bricks, so now I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of the texture around the bricks. And you can, even if you go over top of the bricks, you can smooth that out or wipe it off easily. Now I'm going to add some more bricks here. And in a minute, you'll see me add some to the bottom right. And then once I start adding the texture, I decided it was too much and I didn't like it, so I cover it up. And that's easily done. Before you add your texture or paint, lay your windows down and get them in the correct position and then use a pencil or a pen and draw around the edges so that you know where these were going to be glued down. This way when you go to put texture or paint you can kind of try to keep it off of this area so that when you glue your windows down they'll glue flat. If you get a little bit of paint on there, a little bit of texture, it's not going to be the end of the world. But this does help you so that you can keep as much of it off of that area as possible. And here you see me cover those bricks up. I just decided it was too much or I didn't like the way it looked. So, And it doesn't show when you do that. If you get it on there thick enough, you won't know. And you want to just cover the whole entire front with your grit paste. There you see I've finished and attached the windows. Now we're going to work on the bookshelves. The bookshelves are cut from the chipboard. And um, I've just painted them all black. Both sides are... I think I painted both sides. I may have used black chipboard. I think I did on this. Yeah, I did. I used the black chipboard, so I'll come back and paint it or distress it here in a bit. And you want to start by putting your L-shaped piece in. Then you want to put the larger of the wall pieces or backs in. The larger piece goes on the back and the, the narrow, narrower, ah, I can't talk, piece will go on the right wall. And you'll see me putting this together in the video in a specific way and after I did this I had the idea that it probably would have been easier to do this a little differently uh, because once I got the top and both end pieces glued in it was a little difficult to get the shelves in so what I suggest in this case do as I say not as you see me do so once you get your back pieces um, in, then you're going to go ahead and put in this left edge piece or side piece, whatever you want to call it. You'll see me do that in just a second. And you want to make sure that your painted edge is facing outward on this piece and it fits in just like that. Now you'll see me adding the right edge piece. So don't do that at this point. At this point, I would go ahead and put glue in the inside shelves. Then when you get the shelves glued in, then come back and do this piece. And then finally do your L piece on the top. I think you'll find it much easier to do that way. If it were just a straight piece and you were you didn't have the L shape, then it would be fine to do it this way. But with that L shape, it did make it a little difficult. So on the front, we have two storage cabinets. Again, I'm using black chipboard here. Um, you can cut it out of whatever color chipboard you want and paint it. Um, I will be painting mine. Here it is painted and installed so you can see what it looks like. I did give you options with this. There is this one long piece. If you didn't want to use the storage cabinets, I did make you a single shelf that will fit all the way across that front underneath the windows. So it's up to you whether you want to just use a single shelf or you want to use the little storage cabinets. I also gave you an option on the bottom of the storage cabinet. I have a straight rectangle piece 
and then I have the piece with the slanted edges. You can use either one on the bottom. You'll see me using the decorative uh, piece with the slanted. Then you have drawer fronts and some little flat back pearls to use as the drawer handles. I, these are four millimeter flat back pearls. <laughs> And you can paint these. I buy these. They're relatively inexpensive on Amazon. And um, they're easy to paint or color with a marker or alcohol ink. And I use them all the time. So we're going to start putting the cabinet. You want to put your glue on the outside edge, the narrower edge of this bottom piece. It's going to be glued right on top of the larger piece you see below my hand and that is the front of the cabinet. I'm going to use my one two three blocks here and slide it up next to this front piece and then add this piece on top. And again the one two three block gives you support so that everything is straight. And at the right angles. And you do want to let this piece dry before you go trying to attach the side pieces. It doesn't have to be completely dry but you do want to get it where the glue has taken hold. And you have your side pieces and there's two of those they both glue in exactly the same way they'll be flush with the edge of this front piece and glued to the back side which is actually the floor or the bottom of the cabinet I had to move mine over because it kept sliding on me on that paper See, I'm putting glue on just the outside edges. Squeaky chair, sorry. And the next piece we're going to use is this inside back. And you want to glue it on each end and then just slide it down inside so that it attaches to those two side pieces. You want to sort of hold this for a few minutes so that the glue takes hold. And now we're going to glue the top piece on. I apologize if y'all just heard my stomach growl. I'm sorry.
when you glue that top piece on, make sure it's flush at the back. Now you want to glue your drawer fronts on. There's four of them, two on the left, two on the right. Just space them evenly. And you will want to paint this before you add your knobs. When you go to attach it into the front section, you want to just glue on the edges that are sticking out and on that back piece. So on each of these edges and up here on the back piece and then on the bottom and slide it in. The back piece was added because, as you can see here in a second, you can see part of that standing up through the window. Later on, I do come back and add a ledge in the front window so it hides that a little better. And I think in the, um, the SVG file, I made a correction for that and shortened it some. Now we're going to build the left bookshelf. It's pretty much built in, in the same way. You put your L shape down first, then your two back wall pieces. And I did give you some options on this. Um, I've got a couple of shelves cut in L shapes, and then I've got some straight shelves so that you could add as many or as few shelves and set the bookcase up the way you want it. I kind of made Mine have shelves, the L-shaped pieces, and then some straight shelves along the back wall. And on the left, I left it to put uh, posters or whatever for the shopkeeper. <clears throat> but you just set it up however you like it. At least you have options this way on how you want to make your bookcase. On the right, you can see that I've gone ahead and painted and added the white dry brushing. And I also have some spider webs in the SVG file, and I've decorated the edges in the corner of my bookshelf there with the spider webs. That's just an option. You can also see I've used a spider web on the door and a little eye wiggly kind of bead that I had. Again here, put, put your shelves in first before you add the edges or the side pieces and the top piece. There's two L-shaped shelves you can use. I believe this is how I finished mine was I used both L-shape. And then I just used these straight pieces along that back wall. I didn't use them on the left side as well, just along the back. And I didn't wind up using all of the shelves either. So again, just make your bookshelf the way you want to make it. I guess I did put one on the bottom on the left. Or maybe more. Here you see me dry brushing on the bookshelf. There is a cabinet here that's included in the SVG file. There's also spider webs for the ceiling. Here you can see I've added the spider webs. I've poked holes and put two lights in there. And then I believe next we're going to go to how the um, top was finished. Yes, here's the wires. So here I've got the wires coming out of the top and I've added blue tape on top to hold them flat. You want to get those as flat as you can. Be careful when you bend your wires because uh, you can break those lights. So just bend them very slowly and carefully. 
and before you go doing this next step you might want to hook your wires up and test your lights to make sure they're working at this point so now this is how we finish the um, the top of the magic shop before we attach the bookshop to it and here I'm doing it again you have two roof sections you glue those together measure that the fit is accurate and then you're going to set it off to the side and with a pencil you want to mark where the wires are because you're going to cut this into three sections the idea is that this adds uh, brings the level of the top above and equal with the top of your wires so that when you attach your roof you'll be flat and not bumpy it also provides an easy way that you could take this apart if you wanted to in the future to replace the lights if anything should happen to them it would be fairly easy to uh, take a knife and slide it underneath and pry this apart without doing damage to um, either the magic shop or the bookshop and, and again the the top of the magic shop the the prep work is done in the same way and you'll see bottom roof in the uh, SVG file for the magic shop that you use to do this with on the top final top of the magic shop <clears throat> Off to the left here you can see the roof um, section that I've made and I've already glued it together there's a smaller piece and a larger piece the smaller goes on top typical um, construction for that and earlier I said these were the roof pieces it's not it's the top wire covers is the name of the piece in the SVG file so you'll want to glue those down and then once those are glued you can add your very top piece when you go to add the very top piece add the front and line everything up properly so that you can get the um, overhang even all the way around when you go to glue it you only want to put glue on those back the back section not don't glue the front because then your shop won't open here you see me cleaning up some of the edges before I glue the other piece down I just use a sharpie marker you can use any kind of a marker I also went back and painted um, the left and right edges to match the inside of the bookshop. Now if the front, it's everything is lined up. The magic shop is closed up with both sides there, but again, do not glue the front only glue these three little pieces by the wires and since this is attached to the magic shop underneath there's no need to add a hinge to the bookshop section your hinge on the magic shop will work for everything and I believe that I finished off the back of the magic shop with the same um, brick paper that I used on the magic shop below once you get this set in place you want to put your one two three blocks on top and let it sit till it's completely dry 
and then at that point, once it's dry, you can proceed and paint it. And here I've painted it and dry brushed it. In the next few minutes you'll see um, some photographs of the finished piece. Here's where I've used the um, spider webs to make curtains in the front. You can see the bookshelf or the cabinets installed. Here's the inside. There's also a little ladder in the SVG file if you want to use that. You can see how the hinge is working for the blow. And here is the entire structure. And now I have a lot of little bookshelf things to make and that type. And I will come back at some point once I finish the inside of the bookshop and show it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the project and we'll see you next time.